Hey, hey, it's Emily Rain, and today I will be painting a character from The Simpsons. To be specific, Krusty the Clown. Only in this episode, I can't pronounce it at all. Let's get into it. So first of all, I gotta start off with a sketch. And what you saw me move to the side just then was paint that I pre-mixed for this specific painting because I had the idea that I was going to paint a whole bunch of the Simpsons characters in one day, but it was a rainy day, the lighting wasn't all that good, and I just got through with Krusty the Clown. However, if you like this sort of artwork and you want me to paint more of the Simpsons, I have got the paint, so let me know in the comments below. Also, the Simpsons art style is very, it's very unique to where like if you see that art style you know what show it's from. So it was interesting to try out a new style for sketching this. So part of something I ran into when doing this painting was that I had taped off the edges because I wanted kind of a clean cut sort of look but I never filled in the background. I'm not really sure. You guys will have to tell me how you think it looks. I think it kind of ended up a little cool in the end. But it was also a little bit of a lazy artist hack because I didn't have to draw hands or part of his hair. Also, I was struggling drawing circles. I've really been obsessed with The Simpsons lately because it's been that little bit of humor I've needed when things have been really gloomy in the world. And what better to break the gloomy monotony of the world than a clown? As I was painting this though, all I could think about was um, Squidward from Spongebob. There's like a series of paintings in his house that's just him as a clown. And like sad clown paintings are kind of creepy. And I'm I'm not one for clowns really. I don't I don't really think anyone is one for clowns necessarily. Like comedians and clowns, there's a difference between, I feel like. However, like, clowns do more physical comedy, and comedians do more verbal comedy. However, in The Simpsons, Krusty the Clown definitely mixes both together. Here I'm going in with some of my pre-made paints, and I was really happy with, like, the consistency I was able to get out of these paints, because sometimes when I do acrylic, it doesn't cover... Oh, this is acrylic paint, by the way. I probably should have said that right off the bat. But sometimes with acrylic paint, you don't get this even consistent texture. And it ends up like spacey or you can really see like the brushwork in it. And other times you can get this sort of like like, you know when you take a dry brush and you brush it across the paper? That's what I end up getting a lot with um, acrylic rather than this uh, glossy, fuller painted look. Which I'm really happy about. I was really happy with how this painting turned out. My original plan for this painting was to use my Posca markers and only use that to do the painting. However, I didn't have all of the right colors, so I decided to mix some of my own. And I do use the Poscas for a couple of things near the end, but it ended up being an acrylic painting because I don't have that many colors of Poscas. And 
the nice thing about Poscas is you can use them with pretty much whatever medium you're working with. Whether it's watercolor, acrylic, markers, there's usually a way to like make the project a mixed media project and find a way to use the Posca markers. And here I'm going in with the main color for the shirt. And I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but whenever you're painting, do you ever get really attached to one paintbrush, even if it's the wrong size of paintbrush, and that's all you'll use? Because I just noticed that I did this throughout this video, and that is definitely a problem I run into when painting. Like, even if the brush is like the most impractical for whatever I'm doing, I'll just use it anyway. Because I've become so emotionally attached to using that specific brush for the painting. Now, as far as like the Simpsons goes, Krusty the Crown, Krusty the Crown, Ah, yes, I misspoke. <laughs> Krusty the Clown. It's kind of a tongue twister. But anyway, that is not my favorite character in the whole series. I'm honestly not very sure which is my favorite character now that I bring it up. However, I do enjoy how much Bart idolizes Krusty the Clown. Because Bart is secretly just a little fanboy at heart. And the amount of times, like, Sideshow Bob tries to kill Bart, or the amount of times Bart gets, like, caught up in Krusty's business, like, that's every little fan's dream to, like, meet their idol and help them with a problem of some sort or like just get swept away in their world. But also he brings like humor to the show as well. And he's a good character. He's got his problems. Like every single character on that show has their problems, but this was a fun one to paint because his colors kind of go off the general um, the general theme for the coloring of characters on the show because of like the hair color the shirt color and then the face the face was the really unique part about coloring Krusty the Crown Krusty the Crown wow if I say that one more time I'm just gonna go ahead and punch myself in the face so we're gonna we're gonna deal with this. <laughs> uh, I don't even remember what I was saying. That's fun. Okay, yeah, I was talking about the colors. The colors were kind of unique for Krusty the Clown compared to the other characters in the show. And I think I might like to paint more of the characters going into the future just because of the consistency in colors and like the consistency in style that the paintings would have all together if I did like a series but I don't know I may and may not actually do that here I am going in with some I would used an off face white color for the teeth and the eyes I never go in with them um, straight white for anything unless I absolutely have to or if it's for like the whites of the eyes here is where I finally got to use one of my Posca markers and I just used it as the base color for the bow tie And we're just going to try and ignore my blonde hair getting in the way of the camera. But now it's all you're going to see now that I pointed it out. 
All right, here I am smoothing in some color, making it less patchy. I wonder if I bought better acrylic, I wouldn't have to do that. The only problem with going in to fix details is sometimes you create more problems for yourself. And now I'm adding the little bit of his neck that's showing in the reference picture I used. I feel like all artists used reference pictures at some point. See, I just created more problems for myself right then and there. And something I was debating the entire time I was doing this is whether or not to add that like single color shading to all of it. And I finally decided not to and just go in with my black Posca marker as line art. And yep, there I am. But with line art, it's tricky because sometimes you completely mess up your artwork with line art and other times it looks so much better with line art. Found a spot to use my red Posca. And now I'm just going in with line art to finish this up. And I think the line art added something to this art piece that was missing beforehand. Like it was either I do line art or I add that slightly darker tone shading, but the line art did it. Something that I've had multiple art teachers tell me when doing line art is to do it in one consistent line, but the problem is whenever your marker or pen fades out halfway through it, it's you have to go back over it, and that kind of creates some inconsistencies with your line art, and I experienced that in a couple of places on the artwork, but not too terribly. I'm still looking around for better um, line art markers for marker drawings, like alcohol-based marker drawings. Haven't been too busy looking for them because Microns and me haven't been agreeing lately. Maybe I just need to do my line art last so that way it doesn't smear with the alcohol markers. And this one is pretty much almost done. Just gotta fill in the mouth and do some final line art on the hair. And then it will be ready for the final unveiling. And the most satisfying part of any art project with painting is taking off the tape. And this is my favorite part of any art project, is taking off the tape. And without further ado, here's the final project. Thank you guys for stopping by and watching the video, and hope you have a wonderful rainy day. Bye guys!